Have you ever been to this video store before? Have you heard the bad news? It's closing. When did you first start coming here? About 19, middle, mid 80s. Right. They should bury me in the parking lot. I mean, really, <laughs> I've been here, coming here a long time. It's very, very sad to see places like this shut down because they're so unique and there's really nothing else like them. I only got my first smart TV six months ago, and every time my kids want to stream a movie, I say, no, you can't do that. We have to support Haley. <laughs> but it wasn't enough. When we opened in 84, we were 800 square feet, and customers would come in, bring in cold, bring in foreign, bring in classics, you know, all the odd stuff. And we just listened, and we just kept doing it, and we grew, and we grew, and we grew, and we went from 1,000 to 3,000 to 5,000 square feet, and then we went from 5,000 to 3,000 to 2,000, and now we're closing. <laughs> Before I moved to LA, I was working for the military in DC. So I hadn't been around a lot of people that loved film. And so when I first came here, I found out Lady Snowblood was out on DVD. And I was like, I gotta find that movie. And so my friend was like, okay, this is the place to come to it. It was my first time getting to watch a movie with another film buff in LA. This is where I knew I belonged in LA once I came here. I was like, okay, this is where there are other people that are like you. How long have you been coming to Video Journeys? Probably like 25 or 26 years. There was another video store where Trader Joe's used to be. It was called Video Hut and I never went there. <laughs> I only went to Video Journeys. You know, we appreciate, we federally subsidize, we do everything to make sure we have these grand libraries with every book in the world on it. We've never figured out how to do that for movies. And here at Video Journeys was something that was really close to that. I have probably between 20 and 25,000. Where are you going to find this stuff? This is a preservation of film here. And it's not always just what you might think. Haley would buy anything I asked her to. What's the most esoteric movie I ever made you buy that nobody rented? I mean, we bought in that um, Israeli series. The Hatu film on which um, Homeland is based, which is much, much better. I made Haley buy lots of reggae documentaries. Lots of reggae documentaries. <laughs> and that room over there used to contain all the porn. There used to be this scary porn room back there. That's where Haley put the porn. Here, are you talking about downtown Abbey? No, we're talking about the huge porn collection you had. Oh my god. <laughs> so like I just felt all this sexual energy back there when I was a kid and you know that's like so scary. There were these middle-aged men uh, uh, who'd, who'd stand by the doorway in the morning looking furtive like, like this. <laughs> I doubt that Haley watched any of that. But yeah. well, you'll miss that too. I do, I really do. I mean I don't see that anymore. I've been so lucky, you know, I hire people and they never leave. <laughs> so it works out great. So what years did you work here? Uh, from 94 to 2010. I mean, all the people that I know from working here, I'm friends with them anyway. So, so, and then the customers, I know a lot of them. Each one had a different focus, like Brett taught, teaching me more about martial arts films that I don't necessarily know. I tell customers, really, I'm the moron behind the counter <laughs> compared to, you know, film goes. And Virginia and I both have like a fetish for BBC and she got me all into this. She's like, you have to watch Brides Head Revisited and Lily and like all these ones from the 70s. And I didn't read anything, but I, <laughs> I know all those novels now. <laughs> so. They're deep, strange but deep. Do you mind being described as strange but deep? Please, that's my mother. See? Thanks for my legitimate name. See? We've had Patrick Stewart, we've had Keanu Reeves came by. He called one day, he said, you have Wuthering Heights, the classic. It was a moratorium at the time, and we said, we have it, but we can't sell it to you. So he came in here and rented it, and he never brought it back. Did I hear you say Steven Soderbergh? Yes, I wasn't here. He came in with his girlfriend or his wife at the time, and they rented a bunch of uh, foreign films. Also, Newman from Seinfeld used to come in. Uh, oh, Kyle, Chan uh, Kyle Chandler. He came in here, he just moved to California and he was looking for a job. And we didn't hire him because we didn't need him at the time. You had no job for Kyle Chandler. I, we didn't at the time, but we would have probably hired him if we had an opening. What kind of movies do you like? Um, I love Cars 2 and Spy Kids and that's all. 
can you show me what you picked? I picked this and this. Good choices. We, we've seen, seen kids grow up, we've seen divorces, we've seen deaths, we've seen, it's, it's been the whole thing, the whole sort of life experience. Thank you for coming today, I really appreciate it. The thing about Netflix, I decided, is it's this very solitary experience. I am so clueless, I have never streamed in my life. I am like a streaming idiot. I will often come in here with an idea of what I want to see, mm -hmm. and then suddenly I get in here and somebody will come up to me and go, Mr. Harris, have you seen this one? What do you think of this? You know, so it's, it's about sharing. It's about a film community, people that love cinema. That's what I would do like just with film friends like from school if we were broke and just needed to hang out but didn't have money, we would come here and get something and all hang out and watch a movie together. A few years ago I was working and the guy's battery went dead and he said, hey Paul, can you give me a ride home? So I gave him a ride home. So you're not going to get that on Netflix. I'll probably just keep coming back over the next couple of days. I just want to feel this environment for a little bit more while it's still here. July. I'm going to live, eat, breathe this place and smile and, yeah, just do the best that I can. That last day when they walk out of here, you know, it's just going to be kind of the end of an era, really. You ever seen Treasure of Sierra Madre? Okay, remember how it ended with the, with the gold blowing back into the mountains? That's what's happening. The movies are blowing back into the mountains. I grew up here. I've been here since I was 20 and I'm 51. When we opened in 84, we ran downstairs because the Olympic torch passed through. I'm so grateful to the Silver Lake community. I can't say enough to everybody. All right. Well, long so thank you. Yeah, thank you.